Hey guys, what's up? I hope everyone's well. Um, in this one, we're going to take a look at starter kits. So we're going to take a look at some of the starter kits that are available for Laravel 9. And some of those are going to be Laravel Breeze. And we're going to take a look at Laravel Jetstream. So it's going to have a quick demo here of Laravel Jetstream. So things that come with the starter kit, you have a login. So you can come here and login. If you've created a user, I just created a fictitious user like this. And this will log you in and you'll have like a profile. You can check out the profile area, which contains your profile information, um, you know, updated passwords, two-factor authentication sessions, and you can delete the account. So all this stuff works just right out of the box. It's an excellent starting point if you just want to see something, uh, you know, done in Laravel. You want to mock up something fairly quickly. I recommend this. And you have all the functionality that you need to get started. So such as registration. You can register a new user. If you're already registered, you can jump to login once again if you forgot your password. Uh, there's all sorts of features set up inside of these scaffolds, and we're gonna get to um, learning how to set this up and how to get started. Okay, so we're gonna pick up where we left off. As a side note, guys, I just wanna let you know you wouldn't have your password and your root here and everything like that set up, but just for the sake of brevity in the series, I'm just gonna keep everything open so you guys can follow along. So you want a more you know, cryptic password and you'd wanna have this you know, to a user or a specific user or whatever, and you wouldn't have this readily available. Okay, with that said, we're gonna need a few prerequisites. I'm using Table Plus here, but you guys can use whatever you want. This is a database management system, so you'll need to have a database created. And in this case, I called my database fundamentals, which correlates and matches over here with my data set over here in my ENV file. You'll have to use something like MySQL WorkBrunch or NaviCat or, you know, any other database management tool you like, or you can just do it manually by going into MySQL and creating a data set. So you'll need that um, to, for this to work correctly, okay? Also, you'll need to have NPM installed, so check out the previous video on how to set up NPM and get that going, so we'll need to use that as well. So here's the original project. So this is just a Laravel project that I newed up, creating Laravel new in the name of the project, like we did before in the previous lessons. Notice that there's no scaffolding attached, it's just set up as the regular default project. The Laravel starter kits come in different flavors and different levels. So if you're fairly new, I recommend starting with Laravel Breeze. It provides a fairly simple, uh, minimal starting point for building an application. Another thing to note is that uh, Jetstream is designed with Tailwind. So when you have a Laravel project, you can have different types of CSS frameworks that you'd like to use, whether it's Bootstrap, whether it's Tailwind CSS, or some other front-end framework. Okay, so we're gonna work a little bit backwards here. We're gonna start with uh, Jetstream, and then we're gonna do Laravel Breeze. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to compose or require Laravel Jetstream, and we're gonna use this command. And then I'm gonna run this command. So once it's done, we've basically just installed the Jetstream package. So once we've done that, we need to just like choose our flavors, okay? Choose what we're gonna use, whether we're gonna use either Livewire or we're gonna use Jetstream with Inertia. In this case, I'm gonna use Laravel with Livewire instead of Inertia. So the command for that is going to be php artisan jetstream install, and we're going to say live wire. So the only difference between the installation at this point is that I'm choosing live wire. If you were going to use inertia, then this command would not be live wire. At the very end, it would be inertia. Okay, so in this case, we're just going to use live wire. I'm going to run this command. So once the publishing is complete, you're going to have to run another set of commands, and that's npm. So you're going to need to install npm and then you're going to run it to build up your assets. So now you can run this command individually or you can run it all together like above. It'll do the same thing. So when the command is finished, we ran npm install to install any dependencies that we needed, and then we ran Laravel mix, which is done by npm run dev. So we then compiled out what we needed, which is some of the CSS from the Tailwind and some of the JavaScript that's needed to get the scaffolding up and running. So if we were to go over here to resources and we check out views, you'd see that we now have two different things. We have a layouts directory, which wasn't there before. And we have a bunch of other components that weren't there before as well. So in this uh, app.blade.php file, you'll see that we have some kind of scaffolding already set up for us. And it's pulling in this mix.app.css, which is found over here in the CSS directory under app.css. And you can see that it's pulling in Tailwind as a design scaffold for this uh, starter kit. So keep that in mind as well, okay? So we'll close this up. And as far as JavaScript as well, if we go over here, we'll see that we pulled in 
Alpine, which is a JavaScript framework with a very light footprint. And this is also set up and ready to go for you with this scaffold. Okay, so we'll close this as well. So there's also a few additional things that are have been added and that's underneath the config file. So over here in the config area, we'll see that we have a few other things added here. We have a Jetstream config file, which allows us to configure and do different things with Jetstream, uh, turn different features on or off, depending on the implementation we have going on. And uh, it's good to note that this is here as well, okay? And we also have a few other things that were added as well, such as Fortify and a different bunch of configurations as well. So do note that, you know, the project is being augmented significantly and there are a lot of files being added and put into place with this scaffold. So let's close these up. Now, there is one final step that we need to do to kind of get the scaffold fully up and running, okay? So if we check our project over here in the browser and we do a quick refresh, we'll see that we have some errors here. So it says there's no tables, uh, you know, fundamental session doesn't exist and we need to run a migration. As you can see, just looking at our previous project, we have a set of errors here, and that's because we haven't ran migrations yet. And we'll also get into that in this series. But Laravel 9 comes with a brand new version of Ignition. If you're not familiar with what that is, it's just basically a Laravel error page system. And it's very good and pretty intuitive in telling you what's going on and what's wrong with your project and what you need to do. So from over here, we'll just click on this command and we'll run the migrations. It literally ran the migrations that we needed to run initially and uh, we can refresh. And as you can see, it gets our scaffold up and running. So what we essentially did here with that arrow page or ignition, we basically ran this command, which is artisan migrate. So it did that for us. It was intuitive and smart enough to understand that we were missing a specific set of instructions or something we needed to do next. And it helped us complete that, which is a very welcome addition to my workflow. I really enjoy that. So back to our scaffold over here, we see that we now have different pieces that have been added and visually they're in the top, right? We have our login over here. Uh, we also have some forgot password uh, functionality. We also have over here some registration functionality when we get back to register. Now there's a lot going on behind the hood and it looks very simplistic and kind of just, you know, minimal changes. It looks like on your, you know, new Laravel projects, but there's been significant amount of changes. Let's take a look at our data set. So I'm just going to kind of refresh this here. And as you can see, it's added a bunch of tables, failed drops, migration, password resets, some tokens, session, a user table. So just out of the box, just, you know, initially just starting with the starter kit, you get a lot of functionality built right in just on inception. So let's just take a quick look at some of these. I'm just going to create a user and I'm going to log in to our project our scaffold set up with uh, Jetstream and we're using Laravel uh, Livewire and we're going to see some of the components that were built out and some of the functionalities that are available for you guys. So what I've done is I've just basically just registered a user. You can just do that right out of the box. So you just go to the registration page, create a user and register that individual. What is done here is created a profile. So we have our user profile information. This can all be updated. I can change this to, you know, something else. I can save this. It gives me some feedback and it's changed right away. So notice that this is an effect. Also, I can update my current password. I can create a new password. I can do things like enable two-factor authentication if available. It tells me which browser sessions are currently running and how many sessions I'm currently logged into, and I can delete this account. So that is a lot of functionality that you'd normally have to build just right out of the box. Um, and that's done for you, you know, right away. Um, you can also have your dashboard where you would have, you know, any kind of logic or any kind of other things you want to add here. And this is just a template page. It's really amazing that something like this is available for you to do just right at the inception of a project. So let's log out. And I want to go back to this file, this app.blade.php. There are literally two files inside of the resources layout uh, views section here under this folder layouts. So there's the guest layout, which handles all the auth things. And then there's the app blade, which is a templated page that handles all of the scaffolding for those particular pages. So do note that the styles have included here are once again, Tailwind. We've, we've acquired Livewire and we've acquired Livewire scripts 
and we've acquired a bunch of other things that we're going to actually cover in this series as well. With that said, I won't go into all the details of Jetstream. I will post a lot of the techniques and tips in the Laravel techniques tips videos on this channel so you can take a greater look at Jetstream and some of the nuances around some of this functionality. But for now, we're just focusing on just getting it set up, installing this, and getting it ready if you had a project just right out the gate. So that's done. We're going to now take a look at the other side of the coin, which is Breeze. So I'm just going to close this all up here. Okay, so now we're going to install Laravel Breeze. And it's as easy as running this command. So this command that we're running here is just Composer Require Laravel Breeze, and we're going to set it up for development. And then we're going to run the same process, kind of like we did before in Jetstream. So we're going to say PHP Artisan, and we're going to say Breeze, and we're going to install. And you'll notice that this process is almost familiar, almost the same as Laravel Jetstream. And then PHP Artisan Migrate. Okay, then we'll check our database tables over here, and we'll just refresh. And you can see it's a little bit different than it was in Laravel Jetstream. So we still have a user's table, but there are less columns and less details. Uh, we still have the tokens, we have the password resets, we have the migrations and failed jobs. Overall, um, pretty much the same as far as the scaffolding. Once this is all set up, you also notice that Laravel Breeze kind of does use the same templating system as uh, Jetstream, and it uses its styles are also Tailwind as well. And you can change that to whatever you need. Uh, do note that like Breeze is not limited to just this. You could use things like uh, Vue, Inertia as well, and even Livewire. These are just starting points or templates just to get you up and running. And let's check it out. If we click on Login, you see there's a slightly different logo for the Laravel Breeze. And if we click on Forgot Your Password, you'll see that it's kind of pretty much the same thing. Just the Laravel logo is slightly different than that of Jetstream. And let's create a user and log in to see what this would look like. You have your registration. I'm going to walk you through a really quick setup. And then I'm going to register. Once I've done so, you can see the Breeze is slightly different here. We have the same kind of dashboard, different logo. You're logged in. If I check my user profile over here, you'll see that I just have log out. That the profile settings is not set up. Um, I can log out. And as you can see, you can choose between either Breeze or Jetstream. It gives you some nice scaffolding out of the box or some starter pieces that usually do take a lot of time and you know do take an effort to set them up and they are ready to go for you right out of the box so that's nice do note that there are other types of implementation that you can also set up with laravel breeze so breeze does once again offer inertia it does view or react and that's just depending on the command that you choose when you install so Instead of just leaving this command PHP artisan breeze install, you can add certain flags, whether you want to use Vue or you want to use React, and that will change the installation uh, to cater to that platform that you want to use. You could also do things with breeze such as next.js or any kind of API interface. Um, it's really the same thing, except that you choose uh, whether you want to use an API or not, and the command would be API. As you can see, there's a lot of scaffolding and starter kits, things that come right out of the box with Laravel 9. I hope that gets you guys started and gets you thinking about the type of applications you want to build. It's very easy to implement and get started. And there are times when you won't need to use these ones. You may have something custom or something unique. Laravel is really forgiving and lets you set up the project however you see fit, and you can do any kind of customization or unique platform that you choose to do. All right, well, that's it for this one, guys. I hope that helps, and I hope you learned something new. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave comments below, and let me know your thoughts. And I will see you guys next time. Take care.